Welcome to C.1.2. Today we're going to describe and explain the reactions that occur in the blast furnace. So what you can see here is a simple diagram of a blast furnace. You can see the temperature gradient getting hotter as you go down. You can see here ultimately our, our goal is to get some molten iron that we can extract and use to create steel and other um, you know, iron related materials. So if we take a look here, we have a gas outlet, so gas can escape there. Here we have a hopper or, or sort of a, a way to feed in iron ore. So again, iron ore is usually iron um, that's with oxygen, so an iron oxide. And it will also have some impurities in it, uh, some silicon um, and potentially some carbon. Over here we have the air that's going to be blown in. And that's going to be blown in under hot pre or under high pressure. So we're going to look now at the reactions that take place, and there's quite a few of them, and you do need to know all of them. So let's start with first how we are going to form the reducing agents that will allow us to isolate iron from the oxygen. So here are a few reactions. First, the car uh, the carbon, which is coming from the coke, will react with the oxygen that comes in through um, here and that will form carbon dioxide. Now that carbon dioxide can then further react with carbon and that will create carbon monoxide and you'll see how we're going to use that in a minute. Now sometimes some industries will instead of putting in um, um, oxygen uh, they will put, or sorry, instead of putting in oxygen, uh, coke, they'll put in methane and what will happen is the methane will react with the oxygen that you blow in and it will produce our carbon monoxide again but it will also produce hydrogen gas and so we'll see how that could be important in the next bit. So now we get to the producing iron and this is sort of the the redox reaction that happens. So um, first of all the coke that you put in can directly react um, to isolate our iron and that will be liquid and then it will flow down and then it will form our carbon monoxide. And so we can see here that that carbon monoxide can be a reducing agent. And so we've actually either formed it here or we formed it here. And now again, it's producing um, liquid iron. Here we just have two different, um, of, uh, two different iron oxides. And then the last equation shows what happens if we actually put in the methane and how hydrogen works as a reducing agent. So all of those reactions you can see their commonality is they produce liquid iron. In terms of removing the impurities like silicon, what you can do is you can add calcium carbonate. So that's here where the limestone is being added in. When that happens, it forms calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide can again be further reacted there. But the point of taking this calcium oxide is that it can actually react with the silicon dioxide uh, impurities, forming this calcium, um, silicon, and oxide um, material. And so that can then be removed separately from the iron. The calcium oxide can also reduce with the aluminum oxide, producing another um, material that can be removed. 